My guys, what up guys? It's your boy Shalagandla for back at it one more time doing the thing properly welcome to the art toasting show the only show on the internet where you can submit an art piece and a year later there will be a 25 to 30 percent chance that your art will be reviewed so let's get to those lucky 25 to 30 percent of people and let's uh, see what they have uh, got in store for us today maybe i should change the fucking background of this image i'm gonna keep it in this episode but in the next one I might change it just a disclaimer because I know some people are very attached to this background. T O A S T M E. Yo, I'm 15 and this is my most recent art and also my first attempt at digital painting. If you could critique the overall painting the techniques, that would be cool. Okay, thanks for the reading session. Very short and sweet message. My initial like reaction or impression to this is like it looks like you usually you don't usually paint it's it's a kind of a new thing for you you have done a lot of drawing before and you're kind of just trying to transition into painting at least you were at the time of submitting this which was may 1st 2018 so <laughs> shit mate anyway an issue here that i see is that it's still like kind of flat the you kind of want to make it feel a bit more 3D because painting is all about showing 3D surfaces on a 2D surface properly. You gotta convey the form, but you don't really know what the form is in this, from the looks of it at least. Okay, so here we are in the photo store. So let me talk a bit about light sources. So the first one seems to be coming in like this. It's kind of sideways. The second one is like coming toward us a little bit. You gotta keep the location of those lights in mind all the damn time. Well, first of all, I feel like the hair here would leave a little bit of a shadow on the face here realistically. And also this other side of the face would be already kind of in shadow. I mean, you did that already a little bit, but you, you were thinking more about the individual like parts of the face and not the overall big picture from the looks of it. This part of the hair doesn't receive any of that light coming in from this side, so you gotta convey the form of this part with that blue light. The issue here is, I guess, that you were thinking in 2D, completely in 2D, in shapes and stuff, what you normally do, and then you just try to paint on it afterwards. But <clears throat> my recommendation is when you're drawing a thing, try to already then think about the 3D form of the thing you're drawing. So if you think about it while drawing, it'll also be a lot easier for you to paint because you have done a lot of the thinking work on the shape of the forms already. I basically increased the strength of the shadows so it doesn't seem like that main light gets to the other side of the face. Let's also try to enhance some of that secondary light. It's, it's, it's kind of a more of a rim light in this case. Acts as a rim light, not as a main light source. When, when you think about light sources, you may also take into consideration what parts come in front and block the light because in this case, there's a lot of this hair in front of the side of the face causing that rim light to not really get access to this side of the face maybe just move it a little bit more backwards like this so that it doesn't get in the way of that other light so you can put that light on the face freely here and you can just fill up those shadows with that secondary light making it nice and juicy since this part won't be receiving any light anyway because it's so low down already we can just expand the hair over to the lower part, I guess. We can keep it. Also, I just noticed that the eyeball is escaping the head here. <laughs> can I liquefy this a bit? Bring the chin forward a little bit more. And now that I look at this side over here, that main light source side, there's no way that blue light could find its way over here. I would also remove that big old yellow part from that side over there because it's not coming from the back and maybe on these parts that are already like turning a little bit upwards again. The highlight would also appear here. I don't know, it doesn't really look very appealing anymore because I ruined it. It doesn't really have the vibe it had originally anymore. It needs some more kawaii-ness in it. So maybe I would, I got rid of the tooth. That's a big contributor to the kawaii-ness. I'd add back the highlight over here 
here, maybe a highlight on the nose, and maybe as the last thing I would try to make the hair feel a little bit more like hair, make it like streaky, and it's gonna be very epic. And maybe as the finishing touch, I would put some of that ambient light on top of the hair here, some of that white from the background. I mean, like, it probably wasn't your plan to have a white background, you just didn't think about the background at all. But if you're gonna have a white background, this is also like a possible thing that you can do, whitening the up-facing areas. Yeah, and that's Pretty much it for this piece, I guess, I guess. Toasted, huh? Jesus, I need help. I'm 13 years old and I started digital art and animation two, three years ago. I need some of your criticism since I'm kind of stuck in a loop of my mistakes. I think my shading, lighting, anatomy, especially hands and posing are one of those. Pretty sure I have other mistakes that I don't notice, so if possible, just critique the overall art. Okay, very cool. That, that looks surprisingly clean for a 13 year old. Very good job. You were probably like 14 at this point because this was sent almost a year ago. <laughs> I think you, you are somebody who improves very fast judging from this one image because like I see that you kind of have a kind of 3D thinking going on that I haven't really seen a lot in other 13 year olds artworks. So props to you on that. When you do shading, you don't just go at it random. You think about form and shape. You think about the large shapes first and then move down to the details so that's exactly how you should approach it that's good however i think what this piece in particular could use is a little bit more defining of the details with the shading and also i would maybe go like an extra step darker you have like one step of shadow here one step of highlight but i would maybe go an extra step further because again i think you have the capability to do that define some of the areas even further so maybe i'll just use the lasso tool to give it that cell shady look because i usually just paint so I'm just doing a little bit more fine detailing with that, with those same shadow colors that you already have going on here, while also putting in a little bit more of those dark shadows. And I guess perhaps the most critical part where you should have applied this is the hair. Cause like it's th this tone right here where, the, where it's getting hit by the light. And it's pretty much exactly the same on the other side, except that you have like a sideways gradient going on like this. I would fill this entire area of the hair with that darker tone. And also maybe I would shift a hue towards orange a little bit more for the shading area. Okay, so yeah, that's basically my thoughts about this image. Maybe after you've done with the initial stage, when you're done with this, you can let it sit for like, I don't know, a couple of days or something, and then come back to it and try to take these forms and shapes further with a fresh mind. Yeah, maybe I'll just put in some of those highlights in proper places before I go, because you have seemed to put them here on the side while the light source isn't coming perfectly from the side. But it's like more of a, more from a three by four angle, like diagonal angle. So the highlights would also not be here on perfectly on the side, but rather just here like this. I see that you also have like this kind of a rim light here going on. So I would maybe strengthen that just a tiny bit, bring it back in where it needs to be. Also, it would help bring out these dark areas against the dark background. It brings out the character silhouette and it's very cool. Can't have a child I'll paint over without rim light. I gave up using the lasso tool and went in with the paintbrush so the style doesn't look consistent anymore, but I would suggest trying to do something like this in your cell shaded style peas roast me i would like an overall critique how could i do better etc i am 17 years old you are 17 but you promote smoking how dare you i'm kidding i also started smoking when i was 17. i don't anymore though i quit years ago it's very crowded i'll give you that it's quite a lot of stuff going on i would grab that marlboro text up here and i would move it down here on that white spot here 
product so that it's on a clear background. This is like product placement, might as well make it be clear. Another thing I would do is those flowers, when you compare it to the skin and like the shading of the character overall, they seem kind of flat and more reminiscent of those on the side and the background, I guess. Maybe that was the point. But in this case, like I think they could use a little bit of spicing up. I also see like you did some reflected red light on some parts of the character's body. And like that's cool, but it's so minor. It's like barely noticeable. I would maybe increase the strength of it. So yeah, let's just take it to Photoshop. Why am I still here? Yeah, I would put this text down here and I would grab all of this and move it upwards. I think it reads like a lot better now. What do you guys think? Is this a valid criticism? Well, like I think you could utilize that white space down there. There's no point in having like blank white space on an otherwise like super crowded poster. But yeah, let's do the flowers. We need to make them pop. Bringing in a little bit of contrast. Just putting in some shading basically on these because they have none. When combined with the shaded character like properly shaded character it looks a tiny bit out of place in my humble opinion yeah i decided to also put in some shadows those layers just dropping shadows on the lower layers i'm trying to bring in some of that red surrounding light let's see what turns out of it if it's a good idea or not because i felt like it could be a good idea well with these like super light colors of the character it's hard to make it look good because the skin color is like close to white the red would only look good in shadow areas and not so much in these lighter areas so let's erase it from the lights it can still be on the hair because the hair has a dark local color maybe let's even put it on the flowers a little bit yeah it's like blood and smoking is related to blood because it kills you slowly so it's appropriate <laughs> anyway i don't know what else to do with this picture like i feel like it's not supposed to look like super realistic and doesn't need to have super super proper painting technique and such but what i would enhance however is this little smoke stuff up here i think that would look a lot better if it was like actually looked smoky this is like a smoking ad after all I'm just trying to like keep it at its original shape. Anyway, that's all I, I guess I wanted to do with this piece. This is before, this is after. Hi, please roast my art. I'm 15 years old and I'd like a bit of advice on perspective or you can just roast me, D. All right, holy, holy moly, holy moly. This is a lot of detail. For a 15 year old, this is quite, impressive if you ask me but yeah i do have a couple of thoughts about this picture right off the bat for the most part the perspective is like kind of fine kind of the main thing that pops out at me is this roof this is just going in totally the wrong direction like a quick photoshop tip for you guys if you use the polygon tool you can make quick perspective guides so just in the sides here type in like 99 that's the maximum amount of sides you can do then in the options bar here you choose star and you raise this indent sides by 99 percent now it's a star with 99 endings you can make quick vanishing points with this let's see where the horizon line is for you it goes here right in the middle of the piece basically everything that's above this horizon line will be viewed from below but let's also put those vanishing points into place first it seems to be right here at the edge of the piece if i want to determine where the other vanishing point is i will follow this line right here just drag it over to the end here and then extend it past the end extend it all the way towards where it would meet with the horizon line so now i can do another star there okay great very nice now the main thing is this roof so I'm just gonna overpaint this whole area. And let's put that edge right here, like this. So this starts over here, goes up to this point, stops over here, but it stops up too high according to the vanishing points. They should be on the same line here. So yeah, you can already see some improvement in this just by doing that. And yeah, the whole roof is basically a little bit messed up. 
Let's just to fix it one step at a time. We start from this point and we follow the blue vanishing point we got on the left side. So yeah, now I'm following the other vanishing point for this part. I'll just make those two parts meet right here and the rest is gonna be disappearing. Also like another thing I noticed is that it's a little bit hard to tell what the local color of the roof is. You seem to have had a lot of fun with the lighting, but I'm gonna have to talk about the lighting as well in a bit. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just fix this roof up before. So let's just say that this purplish color is the local color. Now, how to texture this roof while also following this slanted angle of it. For the vertical lines, you just follow this angle of what you have going on right here. I'm just gonna freehand it. That's basically how it goes. You kind of get the idea by now. So this is before and this is after. Like the shape of the actual shape of the house seems a little bit different now. <laughs> I would also want to talk a little bit about lighting and focal points. What's important in this picture, I guess, is this girl and the house. There's like a lot of this empty space down here, just grass areas and just a little like plain glass grass area <laughs> like the hair of the girl kind of blends in with the wall i think the piece could benefit from me just quickly moving the girl over to be against the background that isn't as crowded and this little grass patch would be perfect for that we can increase the size of her move her to the front here or something could go anywhere i think this is a good position because her hair it's like a darker background for that lighter hair so it stands out to some degree although it still kind of gets lost because there is so much contrast going on everywhere so maybe the next step in this image would be to lower the contrast in places where it isn't really necessary like the non-focal points such as the foliage up here it doesn't need to be so high contrast this contrast issue could be tied together with the lighting issue. We can use the lighting to our advantage. The light source seems to be coming in from the left. If it was sunlight, then it would also leave shadows, like cast shadows. So basically this right side of this building would be left in shadow. So how does this fix the contrast issue? Well, it creates like bigger areas. Right now the contrast is everywhere, kind of. But if we make like big areas of light and dark, it will look a little bit more controlled, I guess you could say. And it guides the eye of the viewer around in the piece just a little bit better. Yeah, that looks really nice. Let's just go with some kind of color that would fit the color scheme of this image. It just increases the readability of the piece. Right now the girl seems a little bit out of focus on this image. I think we could fix that by cropping the image in an appropriate way. If we follow the rule of thirds like this, we can place the girl here in this intersection and maybe the corner of the house in a different one, which would look pretty cool. We can use our shadow layer to block this part out, kind of. It doesn't really make sense for this part of the tree up here to be lit by the sunlight because it's like facing down and away from the light source. Yeah, I think also the, gr the head of the girl still needs a cleaner backdrop. So maybe we can use some light rays coming in from the left. So let me just make a new screen layer and paint in some rays of light that bring out the girl's head and also create like a little bit more clear areas of set value. Like there's a really bright part right here, then there is a dark part right here and the medium part down here. I kind of want to put something down here in the corner to bring the girl out more. There's like these out of focus bushes in front here. Maybe we could do that. I'm not making much of an effort to make this look great. I'm just trying to do a compositional trick. Last thing I would maybe try to darken the grass a bit because when I look at the values, the value of the girl's dress looks kind of the same as the grass. Oh shit, that's way too green compared to everything else. So I'll go for it with like yellowish color or something. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's being lit by the sun anymore though. <laughs> Shit, man. I'll just try to grab some kind of grass brush and paint in some brighter patches of grass here so it looks like it's being hit with the sunlight. But I do think that it reads a lot better now when you look at it from afar. And it's important that the piece would be readable from a distance. So before 
And after, toast me. I, I made this a while ago. It's an old character of mine. By the way, I'm 15. Okay, it's a snake. Looks like a snake, or do I see something under the water? Some paws or something? I'm not sure what the what the hell kind of a creature that is. That's an issue that you should address. Are those legs? I, I, I do assume that those are legs. Yeah, let's see what we can do with this. So first things first, we got to determine where the light source is so we know where how to proceed. And the thing with this piece is when you look at it from a distance, again, it's kind of like you don't understand what it is. So you, what you need to work on, I guess, is depicting the form of the character and actually rendering it out more because this just looks like a loose brush strokes right now. You did render the head, you did do some Something called selective rendering but it is recommended to still render other things out to a level where you can understand what they are okay as far as values go in this image your maximum value is like here towards the mid grays you can use lighter values as well and also let's do the same thing here that we did on the last piece let's separate different parts of the image into different value ranges so basically what i would do is i would keep the head with the lightest value then it would be like mid-tones over here on the rest of the body and darks all around everywhere else everywhere el everywhere else i can't english anymore i went to the uk a little while ago story time by the way is incoming i went to the uk and uh, during the time i was there like at least two or three different people referred to me with the word mate basically what i'm doing right now is i'm darkening everything that isn't the head to bring in some like kind of depth into this the closer to the camera the thing is that the brighter it gets basically so basically your light source is coming in from like from the top left just like that so let's keep that in mind while rendering the character or the creature i don't know what it is looks like some kind of dog with fangs <laughs> Oh, are those eyes? Shit, those are eyes. This side of the neck is will be left in shadow. And yeah, this booty part, I think like here is the lower body, the back side of the body. Here is the part where the leg starts. So we progressively start going a little bit darker from here. So this is like a, kind of a knee area, I suppose. And then it hits the water from what I can understand. Wait, like, I don't understand anymore. So the, the part where the ass hits the water is like here. So is the creature like sitting or... This doesn't make any sense, my man. Ah, okay, let me just demonstrate. Let's try to see this from the side. All right, so for me, it looks like something like this. But according to how you rendered the connection point of the water and the booty, the water just starts going up like this, the level of the water. So <laughs> like, maybe I just don't understand what this is supposed to be. Either way, like it's not readable. So I think it is an issue. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna make the water a little bit more blue to not have as much green in there to make the little creature stand out. What is this part right here? Like, this is so confusing. This image, like, I was just painting some waves here. So I'll try to like progressively start going brighter in the water the further back we go in distance and like paint in some of that whiteness from the connection points of the body and the water. Yeah, like I also think the composition is very awkward in this, so maybe we should extend the image so we can see more of what's going on around the character. So in the shadow area, I put in some blue light hitting the side. The reflections of the water is filling that shadow area up. And like, maybe we can put some texture in there as well while we're at it. Some scales or something. I don't know what kind of creature this is still. Like, it's very unclear to me. Just using the colors of that shadow and some of that water reflection to overlap each other. And now I'm just gonna try to imply that there's legs under that surface there by painting in some ripply stuff on the water surface where the legs would appear under the water. Now let's paint some water texture on top of that to make it look like it's a part of that water surface. Yeah, like I think I've illustrated my main points. I'm just gonna try to do some fun stuff, with some highlights, because I think some bright highlights would look good in this case, because it implies that the dude is wet, because he's in water. <laughs> Very smart. So these go in the middle 
of these bright spots, just like that. You need to understand the form of the body to be able to place them in their correct positions. And for me, it's a little bit difficult right now because I don't understand the form of the body that well, but I'm doing my best here. I don't know, dude, like, yeah, you get the basic idea by now. I'll leave it at this. So now I think it's a little bit more understandable. You can understand what's going on here a little bit better. Criticize anything, LLL. Hello, it's me again. Thanks for critiquing me, it was dope. I have another one that I'd like to have looked at in a more critical lens. If you could, I'd be very grateful. So this person apparently has submitted before. It's a pretty cool piece, I'd say. It has a lot going on, but it does have like a clear focal point. It looks like a character, it looks like a tree that's alive and it's coming out, emerging from some kind of body of water in a cave or something. Or is this outside? I'm not sure. Maybe it could be like a forest actually. Yeah, I think it makes more sense if this is a forest. <laughs> yeah, this just needs a little bit more definition because like I see a lot of your sketch lines still visible here. It just looks unfinished if you know what I'm saying. Like I maybe that is the look that you were going for, but if you want this to be more like clear to the viewer, then some more rendering wouldn't hurt. There's some kind of light source under the water. I think you can use that to your advantage. Like I would maybe grab that some of that blue and make like a blue haze here. And now I would erase some of that haze from the character so he just pops out very nicely. And you could also use some of it to create some depth. So the areas that are face, like starting to turn away from us are more blue than the ones that are facing toward us. In terms of value, it didn't have as big of an effect as I thought it would. I just darken the guy a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now, the composition as a whole. The shape language in this image is very cool. You've got these directional trees like this going all in one direction, like bringing focus on the, this guy right here. And he also blends in with his arm and this part, this branch up here. But then you have like a contrast in here also going in the opposite direction. But like a thing that I would change personally, I would remove this foreground rock here. I would not block this way out. I would leave this area open so it would create like a literal path to the character. And I would maybe move one or more of these directional trees down here. So it cre creates a little bit more open space in the composition. I don't know what word to use, but it just makes it feel more open and dynamic. It's like a better usage of the space, I would say. Yeah, just painting in some reflections also on the water to make it look more watery. That just ties them into the image a bit more and it spreads the yellow out a bit which is good. A thing that we can do is create also some haze, more haze around those with the very soft brush and just maybe make them even emit some light on the surface of the guy and maybe in the environment as well. Well, maybe I would just put in a little bit more like tree texture in here and maybe I would use some of that blue light to light it up. I think I'm more or less done here. Like you, I could render this out for what it's worth, but I don't think I have to. Oh yeah, just as a one last thing to make this more clear that this is a forest, I will try to paint some stars in the sky or something to fill those purple areas up. Maybe some black silhouettes of trees in there as well in the lower parts to make it clear that this is a forest, but just very lightly. So why do you guys think that I improved this or nah? So this is before and this is after. Well, the, f the first one, this feels a little bit more dark and gritty and this feels a little bit more fantastical. I think it's because of all the glow I did. Maybe I could tone that down a bit if I want to keep the original vibe in this. Anyway, like, yeah, I think I did what I could. So before and after. Polls help. Hi, I'm Lexi and I'm 17 years old. I'm trying to make the transitions from traditional to digital media, which is harder than I thought. It seems that I'm really afraid of color. Any tips about using color or any general advice? Thank. 
the color is totally fine in this. It has, it works. It has a really gray picture, which works for the angry mood. And it has some yellow highlights coming in, which work. They are, they are a very nice contrast to the, to all of the gray. Like, I don't know what the context behind this character is. It looks very Akira-esque. You want to use more color. So I think you have an opportunity to use an opposite, the complementary color. Is the opposite color a complementary color? Color. shit i don't know my color terms okay yeah i just googled it all right so you have a chance to use complementaries here like you have these blue openings here which are what i would presume is the sky and they are the opposite of yellow so they tie together very nicely they create a good contrast but what i would do is i would go a little bit more saturated on the blue and maybe a little bit darker as well so they bring the yellow out more nicely and you could also spread some of that blue onto the flying fabric in the air like some skylight or something like the fabric is every big part of this piece it would be cool to bring more highlights on that more focus on that make it look more interesting and also yeah just render some more form before i start spreading the yellow out more i will try to darken some parts of the fabric to make it look more like fabric it casts shadows on itself because some of it is above the rest shadows will be a thing and i get it this is like a very challenging thing to paint i would guess Now I have darkened a bunch of areas on the fabric. For the light parts, I would try to use the colors of these yellow thingies in some areas where they would cast light on the surfaces. One thing I'm thinking of is that the depth is pretty hard to read in this image. Like I think that parts of fabric in the back should appear a little bit further in distance. I would like to bring some more depth information into this image and I, I can do that by grabbing some of that sky color and just very lightly going over these fabric parts. So the further back in distance it is, the more blue I will use basically. Also spreading some of that blue on top of the character's hair. It's a totally black spot right now. Yeah, I'm not sure if the blue that I used is the right blue for this image. Yeah, this is a challenging one, I'll give you that. Spreading some of that yellow out on some areas of the face. Because like some of that yellow is like in front here, so it, it lights up the face from the front a little bit. Just a little bit. And then yeah, maybe I would do some Rostran-esque stuff here and do like a color dodge over these thingies to make them more glowy and look like they emit light just some digital art magic i guess i'm like kind of done here just painting in some bigger shadows real quick with that one edge brush i think you've also got like pretty cool shape language going on in this image and i'm trying to just emphasize that a little bit with some of these darker strokes yeah, like it's it looks like a totally different style now, but it is a little bit more colorful, I would say. Just pushed what you had further. Today's paint overs were pretty fun, I'd say. Some cool submissions and submissions are still coming in every day. Not every day, but they're coming in. I don't know how, but some people still still send these to my business email so that's not the right email the right email is roast my art at gmail.com submit here and then a year later or maybe like nine months later there is a 20 to 30 percent chance to get in the show there is some quality control in this like i get a lot of submissions and a lot of them don't make it into the show so do be selective with what you want to send and i'm i'm like i'm exhausted it's like how late is it it's very late right now and i don't usually record in the night so i excuse me if the outro sucks ass but that's what you get so hope you guys enjoyed the vid hope the toast tasted good and uh peace out guys i'm out of here